can you introduce yourself to our listeners with who you are and what you do? Absolutely. My name is Elizabeth Chambers, and I own, I'm the founder and owner and CEO of Bird Bakery. I'm also a television host and journalist. Where did you grow up in Texas, and what was your upbringing like? I was born in San Antonio, and um, then we moved to Houston when I was quite young. Sadly, well, not sadly, but sadly for Texas, we then moved to California, and I grew up in California and then went back to UT for school. So San Antonio, Houston, and Austin. Very cool. I'm a fellow yeah. UT alum as well, so. Okay. Nice. Cool. I love it. I'll go. So can you tell me about what you were like as a kid and just what your interests were and how they maybe influenced who you are today? Like, did you always have an interest in like being a business owner, in being a journalist on TV? Like, how did that kind of play out for you? I've always loved people and I always love, I've always loved their stories. My mom would always joke that when we were in New York and we'd get in a taxi, like I would just interview the driver. I needed to know everything about their lives um, as young as like five. So, you know, I've always just loved knowing kind of what makes people tick and and being part of those stories. And I think that that's why I love journalism so much because you really get to hear those stories and tell those stories. And that's what I also love about running and owning a restaurant. You're part of people's milestones and memories and you really get to know your customers and you can be part of their story as well. So it, like you wouldn't really think the hospitality and journalism would overlap, would overlap, but it really does. And I love both of those things about um, <laughs> about both of my jobs. And what was your experience like at UT? And why did you want to come to UT? I love everything about UT. I love my experience there. I, At the time, I was living in Colorado, and I was modeling a lot. And so I applied to a lot of schools in New York and a lot of schools in L.A., but I was afraid that if I went to USC or UCLA or if I went to Columbia, then I would just kind of be stuck in that modeling world. And I really wanted a full collegiate experience, which there's no better place for that, as you know, than University of Texas. Um, my godmother's father, Red McCombs, was um, had the, his big ceremony when they were naming the school after him that year. So I guess that was probably... 22 years ago. Um, so, you know, I I'd spent time on campus for that ceremony and was very aware of how he was becoming a really big part of the school. And just, I loved it. My high school had almost 4,000 students. So I love the idea of a huge campus. I love the idea of a lot of students. Um, I'd, I loved everything about the idea of it. And then I loved my experience. I was a Pi Phi um, I thought the sorority experience was something that was pretty new to me because I didn't grow up in Texas, you know, and it was it's so specific and so enthusiastic at UT. Um, and I just loved my professors. I loved all of my journalism professors. I'm still very involved in the Moody School of Communication. I love the faculty and the staff and our new interim dean is phenomenal. So, you know, like I just I couldn't have asked for a more collegiate, fulfilling inspiring college experience. Like I can't stand up about UT and I've already told my kids they have to go there so they have no choice. <laughs> I love that. Did you feel like you had big shoes to fill on campus since you already had someone with a legacy and had a school named after them? You know, I've just always been so inspired by Red. I've always looked up to him since I was little. I've watched him do extraordinary things in the business you know, for communications and sports. And I was just always, he's always been a mentor to me. So I didn't feel like it was shoes to fill, but I just felt really fortunate and blessed to know and be so close to their family and just see his wild, wild success and passion for what he does uh, up close and personal. So, you know, more than anything, I think it's just an inspiration. So you said that you were in the modeling world and then went to school for journalism and then now you have your restaurant and so it just seems like you have and in the past had like a bunch of different interests was it ever difficult to did you or did you feel like you needed to just focus on one did you think you could do it all like what was that kind of like to have so many different interests in so many very different spheres you know I think things have really changed in the last 20 years when I first graduated from the J school I thought you know, I knew I wanted to do news. I knew I wanted to do hard news. I knew I wanted to do 
whether that was political or, you know, just I wanted to do meaningful news. Um, at the time, I didn't feel like I could really have a personality doing that, right? You had to have your you didn't have your Instagram profile. You had like your one bio picture that needed to look businessy and you couldn't say the word like because then you wouldn't be taken seriously. And I think as a recent graduate at that time, I was so incredibly focused on, you know, people taking me seriously and people really just seeing me as an anchor and just seeing me as a news person. And thankfully, as a result of social media and a multitude of other things, we can be multifaceted people now. You know, so there was a time where I thought if I do Cupcake Wars, no one's ever going to take me seriously as a journalist. But that really evolved. And I'm glad it did because, you know, we can be we can love fashion. We can do Cupcake Wars. We can do all the things and still be taken seriously as somebody who is reading the news and who's someone who's investigating the news. So, so much has changed in the last decade or two. And um, to answer your question, I've always had those interests and I just feel now that we can be our full and whole self for the world to see and it doesn't detract from one thing you know so i think that that's a beautiful beautiful thing and i love now that i can do shows about cupcakes and cross the border with illegal immigrants and do a show about mental health and do a true crime drama like we can do it all and i think that that's really the goal yeah for sure i feel that same way i'm like <laughs> get my toes in everything i don't want to be yeah so totally so what happened right after UT where did you go and then just where did your career kind of take you from that so my first well I was supposed to graduate in 2004 and then I had this job I was actually living in LA all through University of Texas I had an apartment in LA and I was going back and forth so my first on-air job was when I was 19 at Access Hollywood and I was going like I said Austin LA Austin LA um so my first job offer was uh, for channel one which was is no longer on the air it's basically where anderson cooper and serena achel and a lot of the iconic news anchors and journalists of our generation got their start and they um they had made an offer so i graduated a semester early i graduated in december i didn't walk with everyone else in may and i moved to la full-time and then that job channel one kind or sorry channel one kind of morphed i guess you could say into current tv so then I was working at Current TV for four years as an anchor and journalist there. We did some really incredible things. And then I did a few shows for E! I did a show called The Stylist, which was like more interior and fashion. And then I did a show on the Speed Channel. And then just basically became, I did a lot of stuff for the Human Rights Foundation as well, but moved away from just hard news. And then in 2012, opened Bird Bakery and really started dabbling in the food space. So then started working on the Food Network. And again, now you can just kind of do it all. Now I have a show on the Discovery Channel. I have another show on Hulu um, presently. So, you know, I think that's the beauty of where we are today is that my path was definitely not linear, but, um, but I love it all. And I'm kind of just, like you said, dabbling in all of it now. As someone who watched it a lot, with my mom, actually, when I was younger, I have to ask about Cupcake Wars and how you ended up there and just your experience on the show. You know, once I, with my tele television background, I think I'd been doing, I'd been in TV for like 12 years at that point when I opened Bird. Um, I had an amazing agent named Suzanne Lyon who really helped me get into the food space. And um, I did a show called Sugar Showdown. I did Cupcake Wars. We did Winner Cake All. We've done so many different shows for the Food Network, and they're just always so much fun. You know, you cannot be in a bad mood when you're hosting or judging and eating cupcakes all day. And so many of the contestants are just so inspiring because they've worked so hard to get there, and there's just so much emotion. Um, I did Chop Junior, which was heartbreaking because you have to chop the little kids. And I don't, that's the only one thing I cannot do is tell kids that they've lost. But, um, I mean, all of the Food Network shows are so much fun and so high energy and just, it's just a dream. It's just a perfect day on set every day. I love it. Have you always had an interest in like baking and cooking yourself or like, how did you kind of with getting into that space, how did that work for you? Oh, of course. No, I grew up in my grandmother's kitchen. So my grandmother was a professional caterer and she was kind of the, she was a Martha Stewart of her little town. And then she moved to San Antonio she was actually British, moved to um, Mississippi when she met my grandfather during the war. 
and then moved to Texas when my mom was, my mom went to Trinity. So my grandmother had a catering company in San Antonio. My mom started one of the first health food stores in San Antonio where Paloma Blanca is. So that's why I opened Bird Bakery right between the two of where my grandmother's kitchen was and where my mom's is. So we have a little trifecta of female culinary entrepreneurs happening in San Antonio. And I was all in homage to my grandmother. There was all the cake recipes are my grandmother's, the cookie recipes are mine, our savory recipes are my mom's. So, you know, I've always grown up cooking. I mean, I'm, baking. I'm like a compulsive baker. I, if you could see how many cookies I baked last night, like I just, baking is my therapy, cookies specifically. So, um, you know, even when I was working so much in television, had three shows on the air, I would still come home at night and bake cookies. Like that's just my happy place. So I've always been really passionate about food. My family's in the wine industry as well. So food, wine, entertaining, and journalism. <laughs> yeah. Can you talk about opening Bird Bakery and why you wanted to take I guess, a, a step further in the food space with opening your own restaurant, you know, not just being on shows about it, but kind of running your own company with it. Yeah, well, actually, I didn't even start doing the TV shows about food space until I opened Bird. And at the time, um, I had three shows that were on the air, and two of them were canceled. And I was really frustrated because I thought, you know, that's the entertainment industry, you can go to work every day, you can do your job, you can do a great job, but for a multitude of reasons, that doesn't always translate to, you know, success, like shows are canceled for so many different reasons. So they were all canceled within two weeks. And I thought, I always knew I wanted to open a bakery, but I thought now's a really good time to do that. Um, so that's what I did. I thought it's now the universe is telling me, I like the idea of being actually, actually being able to control my success you know, in business and marketing, if I'm not selling chocolate peanut butter cookie cupcakes, I can move them to the register, put them on sale. And I'm the master of my own destiny, which is not always the case in television. So, you know, that was the impetus. And again, that was almost 13 years ago. And we opened our first location in San Antonio. Our second location is in Dallas. Our third location is in Denver. And then we just opened our fourth location in the Cayman Islands. Very cool. Yeah. Do you have plans to open any more locations? Um, I would love to open in Austin and Houston next. Yeah. So um, what has been the response to your bakeries and what has it been like to see, you know, you took charge of kind of your own destiny and now to see the success that it's grown into and people's reactions to it? It's such a gift and it's so, it's so validating. You know, I always knew that my mom's chicken salad was the best I've ever had, but everyone thinks their mom's chicken salad is the best they've ever had. So to get to share these family recipes with people and see how much they enjoy them and hear them say, don't tell my mom, but your mom's is better. And just these like, you know, I grew up with such fond memories of eating our pimento cheese with wheat thins, like on boat trips and like all of those family memories that I have that are so surrounded by, so centered around food. You know, I'm getting to share those with the world and, and seeing people really appreciate and gravitate towards towards it and and uh, like just relish in it and getting to share like I said earlier those milestones and letting our family recipes be how somebody celebrates their wedding or their birthday or their baby shower it's a privilege and it's a gift and it's an absolute joy to to experience and to watch so you have bird bakery and then you have a couple several shows that you're currently working on as you said earlier yeah. how do you just balance it all and how do you stay or how do you ensure that your mental health is in check? Because I'm sure the work is fun, but it's there's a lot of it's work and it's a lot to do. Things get busy. And so sometimes things can get overwhelming. So how do you like take care of yourself, balance all of these different types of work? Well, I mean, if you look really closely, I slept about two hours last night. Um, but, you know, I think that's a really good question. I think you have you have to everything comes in seasons, right? Like right now. I filmed for like 16 hours yesterday and then I've been on a whirlwind of the last two weeks. But then when you have downtime, I think you just have to take it and you're just going to have busy seasons. You're going to have like, I love a do nothing day. I think a do nothing day is super important and I don't feel guilty about that, you know? So I think you just have to sleep when you can rest when you can and also make hay while the sun is shining. Like I'm not going to say no to things because I'm too busy. Like I really firmly believe get it all in when you can and then have that balance of of the do nothing day or like 
you know, take the bath at night or whatever you need to do to just reset. But, um, you know, it's probably not what most people want to hear because I know everyone's like, you don't have to do everything, but like, I want to do everything that I can. And then I'll rest when I can as well. So it's always finding that balance and realizing that there's a season for everything, I think. On that same topic of mental health, taking care of yourself, you a little while back went through a very public divorce. How did you come out of that stronger? I mean, I think you just have to do the work, right? Whether any sort of grief or trauma or disappointment or death, you know, whether it's a death of a person or a death of expectations, um, time helps, but also I'm a firm believer in really putting in the work. I, yes, time is great, but like, I want to get that process going. So, um, you know, I love, I'm a big proponent of therapy. I'm a big proponent of sound healing, of crazy full moon rituals, of writing things down and burning things that don't serve you, writing it down and burning it if it doesn't serve you, of manifesting, of claiming, all of those some people would call it witchy things, yes. Also, most importantly, like my faith, I'm a really strong believer in God and and a really strong Christian. And I think that God doesn't give us anything that we can't handle. So it's probably an amalgamation of all of those things combined, but really like being proactive in the healing process is something that I would suggest for anyone who is going through something really difficult like that. Yeah, that's really amazing. Difficult, but amazing Mm -hmm. in the end, I'm sure. Yeah, of course. So as you mentioned, you are a UT alum, and you were actually just recently here in Austin for a special little ceremony, an award, or recognition, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Um, Can you talk about that? Yes, it was such an honor to to be given the Texas Alumni Award. Um, I felt like I hadn't done enough for that, but it was truly an honor. And like I said, I just love the school. I love the community. Dan Rather gave me the award, which was a dream come true. He is a legend and an icon and the grandfather of our country, as far as I'm concerned, and just such an extraordinary person to be in his presence just makes everything feel right in the world. (laughs) Um, So it was a dream come true. And honestly, like one of the happiest moments of my life. You said that you felt like you hadn't done enough to deserve it do you struggle with like imposter syndrome and feeling like even though you're trying to do all the things it's not enough of all the things I think everyone struggles with that a little bit it was more like when they were saying there are other people that received the award and it was like class of 1962 and I was like class of 1989 and then mine was just more recent and I thought well I could probably put fit more things in these a few more decades but it's just a good you know inspiration to keep working hard and to your point I was also speaking at um the University of Texas last Friday and a lot of the students questions were about imposter syndrome and feeling like you know and confidence and I think what I told them because I would never I would you couldn't pay me any amount of money in the world to go back to being that age it's such you know you're just trying to find yourself and what I assured them is like, everybody feels imposter syndrome on some level. And if you don't, that's probably a mental health problem. <laughs> like you probably have a personality disorder. Like, you know, you should, we should always be questioning things at all times. But um, what I really emphasized to the classes and to the students was like, self-talk is really important. Um, I'm really grateful for my confidence. I'm super confident, but I'm also am like, never say anything mean to myself and don't let my friends say anything mean to themselves either. Um so actually, I'm glad that you asked about that because it's an initiative that we are starting at the um, at University of Texas to help. There were so many questions about it that after meeting with the deans following the speech, um, it was really clear that that was an initiative that we need to focus on and work on. So there will be more to come on that. <laughs> yeah. Are you able to give any more kind of details on just further work that you'll be doing at UT? Like, Is it one of those things where it's just an initiative that you're giving input on? Are you part of like a board or like, how does it, how does your connection with UT, where is that going from here? So my passion is really talking to the students and interacting with them and not only having, you know, not only having the speeches, but like real, like Q and A's where we can have these conversations. Um, So we are trying to put together something that would almost be like, well, we're, we're, working on how we can make like a five pillar program to really 
address the mental health, the confidence, the stress and the struggle, you know, that students are facing. Um, I know that a lot of those resources are there, but we're looking to streamline it in a way that there's an endowment and there really is, you know, a lot of donors are possibly paying into this endowment so we can have this program that's up and running and it would be for all schools across the board, not just the journal, not just the communication school. So we're still trying to work out exactly what it looks like, but we have identified the need for it and we are actively finding a solution. That's amazing. I'm sure yeah. the will be very happy about this, very appreciative. I think so. So as we come to the end of the interview here, there's a question that I ask everyone who comes on the podcast as a tie-in to the name, and that is, for you, what does it mean to be Texan? A really good question. I think it means to be friendly, genuine, down-to-earth, and have a good sense of humor while not taking yourself too seriously. I like that. <laughs> So where can people find you online or what shows can they check out that you're in? Where can the people find you? Um, so you can find me on Instagram at Elizabeth Chambers. You can follow Bird Bakery. You can follow Bird Bakery Denver, Bird Bakery Cayman, but Bird Bakery will cover most of that. Um, I have a show on Discovery ID coming out soon. It's called Love Struck. And then another show on Hulu that is still has a working title. So all of that will be on my Instagram and I'll keep you posted. Very exciting. Well, thank you so very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. It was nice to meet you and stay in touch, Anna. I will. I will. Thank okay. You. Have a great day.